So I got my transfer case in. This is my rear drive shaft. As you can see, I've got that loosely bolted in there. This is part of my original rear shaft and I cut this right here. This is where I cut my tube. As you can see I put a piece of tape on here so I could cut it very accurately within eighth inch of that tape. Then I cut this piece off of another drive shaft and inserted it into the tube and now I'm gonna weld this but I'm not gonna weld it until I have this end attached because I want to be able to spin this I want to be able to spin this drive shaft like as if it was on a lathe so I can get this the run out as minimal as possible what I'll end up doing is I'll end up jacking this back two axles up putting it up on stands and then I'll run this engine and this transfer case at reasonably high speed and I'll check the run out here so this will basically be like a lathe uh, like a drive shaft uh, balancing machine I may not get it completely balanced, but I'm going to do the best I can. I can't afford to bring this to a balancer guy, a drive shaft guy, so I got to do what I got to do. So, here's my other problem. This diameter U-joint and this diameter yoke is different. This is a big, bigger uh, transfer case with a larger diameter uh, U joint. So I've got to take up that gap somehow. As you can see, here's one of my old U joints, and it doesn't fit in here. So I got a gap. So I made myself, myself some bushings. This is a bushing that I made out of a piece of, of steel tubing and this takes up that space and then when I put my clamps on here it will clamp it down. The second problem is the distance when I put the actual U-joint in here I've got a gap here okay so I've got to take up that gap somehow the end length gap so I took the caps I busted the cap off of this old U-joint machined it down with a cutting torch and a grinder because I don't have a a lathe or a machine shop here and I made a shim a washer basically and that will go in here and if I put this up to here that takes up the space so I will put a tack weld on both sides of this to keep it from flopping out like this and this will fit in here tight enough so that this will go around without doing this wobbling back and forth thing. So put a tack weld on both sides and see how it goes. So I got my conversion U-joint adapter in here. Like I said before, they don't make a U-joint to go from this size to this size in a heavy duty truck application. To do this right, I gotta change the yoke. But I got three yokes at 170 some dollars a piece. 
And I'm just not going to replace a perfectly good yoke, especially if it's bigger and heavier than, than what I need. So th this is the adapter I made. This is a piece of tubing, which I slit here. And then I ground it down. I don't have a lathe, so I ground it with a grinder. As you can see, it's not totally perfect, but it's pretty well straight. And I ground this down to be the right diameter between here and here. Then this is the cap I, I made out of an old U-joint cap, ground it down, put a tack weld on both sides, and as you can see, it fits perfectly right there. I, don't, I, I can't have any play between this nib, this little nibby thing right here, and the other one on the other side. Okay, it's got to fit tight. So, as you can see, nothing is welded to my actual U-joint cap. This is just an adapter cap. See, and now I will take out these plugs, just like this, and find some grade 8 bolts to go in there, and the strap. I got a drive shaft guy here in town. He will sell me the the strap that goes over here and the bolts to go in and I will have this thing bolted in there. You ask me how I hold up this drive shaft while I'm working on it. Well it's easy. You just use a little truck strap over there. You hook it to something and you use a strap to hold things up. This way it doesn't fall on your noggin and knock you out. So, now I've got three more to do. As you can see, there's my front drive shaft there and my front yoke. I've got to build one for that. The strap there is just used to pull this transfer case forward a little bit because it's so heavy I can't move it by myself. So I, if I have to move it, I have to jack it up and pull it with that ratchet strap. And that's my input drive shaft. I'm going to make that one next because I don't really need the front one yet. I will make this top one and make the same adapter for over there. So here's my input drive shaft. I still got to make my bushings for this side but I needed a really short drive shaft. So I took a drive shaft and cut it up and basically cut the shaft, cut the tube off of here. I went a little nuts with the um, cutting torch, but that's okay because here's my tube right here. It's not very long, but it'll work. That'll get shoved on there. And then this will get shoved on there. And then we'll tack it, weld it together. We're gonna make sure this surface is phased in line with this surface. So basically you stand it up like that. Stand this up like that. Put them together. And that's phasing the drive shaft. So let me squeeze this thing together and then weld it up and I'll show it when I'm done.
Not too bad for a homemade job. But I'm gonna get it a lot closer. There's my front drive shaft. It's not turning because I don't have this transmit uh, transportation actuated yet. But as you can see I've got this thing up in the air up on stands and blocks. That's why I can run this thing in gear. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find out exactly where my high spot is. And I'm gonna heat that high spot and it's actually gonna get higher. And then as it cools, it'll get lower. So that'll actually straighten out the drive shaft. So let me shut this thing off and uh, show you what I mean. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to heat this end beside the drive shaft and you're going to see that dial indicator start to move. The shaft is bending. Ever so slightly it's, it's uh, expanding. As I heat this, and I'm going to shut it off. And you can see that it's contracting now so this is bending and then as it cools it'll contract and that dial indicator will come all the way back down around here and then go probably one full turn around and then we'll run it again and see how the run out is so as you heat it up it expands and it bends then when it contracts it bends the opposite way so here's one of my bearing cap adapters or u-joint cap adapters you can see in there there's the adapter to take up the extra space And I found two washers that were the exact diameter that I needed to take up this space in here so that this U-joint doesn't travel back and forth in this bore. So this is, there's a washer on both sides. It's tack welded here and here to my my spacer cup I call it and then these are your uh, U-brackets that bolt on here and uh, holds this really tight and the reason why I split it there is so that this can can um, expand and contract because you want it to fit tight this is putting pressure and fitting tight on this u-joint you don't want this be sloppy bouncing around in there not even a fraction of an inch it's got to be really close so we're gonna try that and see how it works so far so good so I heated it and uh, let it contract and as you can see I've got maybe 10 15 thousand run out so, because this is not a high-speed on-highway vehicle, this is more of an off-road vehicle, I'm going to leave it and drive it and see what happens. And if I decide that uh, there's too much vibration, then I can always heat it and bend it again. Okay, there's my main shaft going for my transmission through the transportation. Real short. Here's my run out. About as good as I'm ever going to get it without getting out of the machine. 
five thousandths of an inch out of ground. I run out, but I'd like to get it somewhere around five, but without putting it on a, a dry shaft machine, you're never going to get it that close. So, but this is a low speed truck, so this is going to be good enough.